I'm 65 years old and I have a million dollars saved for retirement. Is it enough? Well, I see these types of questions all the time on the internet and I think, oh my goodness, I can't believe financial advisors even try to answer this question because there are too many pieces of information that are missing. Number one, for some people, a million dollars is going to be great. Other people, it's just not enough. It's a drop in the bucket. One of the things we need to know is this. First of all, what are your social security benefits? You can find that out by going to ssa.gov. If you're eligible for social security, you'll have an account in your name. And if you're married, you'll have an account in your spouse's name. It's one of the first things that we want to look at because that will be the base of the financial plan. Another thing, do you have a pension? If you have a pension, how much is it? Is there a survivor benefit? Is there a, if there's a survivor benefit, there's going to be a difference between your full pension and what it will be reduced by if you have a survivor. You're married. You're, you need pen, pension benefits for your spouse if something happens to you. Now, another thing we want to look at is this. Does your pension have a COLA, a cost of living allowance? Does it have a way to go up with inflation? The, the fewer the benefits in that area, if you don't have any kind of a COLA, the more money you're going to need elsewhere to make up for the lack of inflation protection. Then the last thing we want to look at is what are your regular savings? Do you have savings in different places? One of the things we find with people with their retirement savings is often the returns are problematic because of the way they're approaching the investing process. In fact, there was a study done by Dalbar and they looked at asset allocation investors. Those are investors that are dividing between stocks, bonds, and fixed income investments, short-term fixed income investments. And what they found was this, is that the average investor in asset allocation funds, they had a rate of return that was less than 3%. Well, if you're having a rate of return that is that low, which is about at the inflation rate, you're gonna need a lot more money when preparing for retirement but you can fix these things because what they found was the average investor had tendency to make some of the, some of the same mistakes. They tended to buy based on past performance. They looked at something, they said, man, that's a really great investment. I want to buy it. And what ended up happening is that markets go up and they go down. Another thing that they found was that average investor typically invest in mutual funds that are buying and selling and buying and selling and trading stocks on a pretty frequent basis. We call that stock picking or they were market timing, which is moving money between various areas of the market based on what they thought was going to happen next. If we're engaging in those processes, they tend to reduce returns significantly. Now, the other thing that we want to look at is this planning process itself. If we look at, there was one study that showed that most people, the vast majority of people think that planning for the future is really, really important. But then they found that typically only around 20% of people engage in the planning process with any type of seriousness. This is the thing we want to change. You're going to plan for your vacations, right? Probably take a lot of time planning for your vacations. Your retirement will be the longest vacation you ever take. Plan for it and recognize that these are some of the things that we're going to look at in that planning process.